So I've seen a number of people urging that the economy reopens. And I mean, I, I can see the frustration. I can see the point of this. Um, and the argument normally goes along the lines of, well, I mean, you know, you protect the ones that you can, but the young and the fit and the healthy should be able to go out and do things. I understand that sentiment, but it doesn't line up with reality because we've had young, fit people who have no underlying symptoms die. We've seen that. So this 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 idea of 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 then trying to come up with this way of protecting our loved ones as long as we can go out and do whatever we want, it does it just doesn't quite work and there are two reasons for it when you fill uh, an area full of people you're giving this virus two things first and foremost you're giving it people to infect and that's the big thing here this is a highly contagious disease and you're filling it with a, a room full of people who are going to contain who are going to contract it and are then going to go out and spread it a lot of these people aren't going to have symptoms so they're not going to give it a second guess they're not going to sit back and think oh actually i, I probably shouldn't go shopping um because i might have it because i went to the pub a week ago or two weeks ago they're not thinking that because they're asymptomatic but they're still spreading the virus the second problem, and this is a, a real problem when it comes to vaccines, this virus can mutate. All viruses can mutate. The common cold is a constant mutation. In fact, this virus itself is a mutation of something else. And the problem when you have that is twofold. First and foremost, if you've had it before and you know you've had it, there's nothing to say that the antibodies you had then can protect you from getting it again. There's nothing to say that it can protect you if you happen to contract the mutated version. And the mutated version might be the one that kills you. And when it comes to vaccines, the problem is, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but it is certainly a concern and it's why we've had to isolate. It's why the WHO have been so very clear on their messaging that this government has ignored. If this virus mutates when they're trying to develop a vaccine, not only could it kill a lot more people, but it also means that potentially we could get very close to creating a vaccine and then it mutates. We're back to square one. That's the problem with mutations. That's why cancer is so much of a bastard to treat because it is in itself a mutation. So it's not quite as simple as saying the young, fit and healthy should be able to, to carry on and the economy should open up again. Because what did we see when pubs opened up? A massive spike. What did we see when the government forced, uh, when the government opened restaurants and even encouraged people to go into those restaurants? A spike. What have we seen with schools? And the thing is, with all these cases, while the government has encouraged it, the second it's gone bad, they have blamed people who have done what they've encouraged them to do. Now, I'm bringing this up for a very good reason. It's recently been announced that Cineworld is shutting down. At the very least, temporarily in the UK, but all cinemas are shutting down. Uh, and it's the same in the US. Now, there was an article, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to find it again, um, but there, there, there was even someone who I quite like, who was talking about it, saying cinemas should be easy to protect, uh, should be easy to protect, because 
you know you, you're not talking when you're you're sat watching a f mm, okay if, if you are in a cinema mm, at home do what you like but in a cinema no, don't don't be that guy don't be that guy but in a cinema it encourages you to sit down in quiet and just watch the film the problem is though people still need to breathe and even when they're wearing masks the mask doesn't stop it from leaving and i'm not an anti-mask dickhead those people can jump off a cliff i have no tolerance for them whatsoever it absolutely reduces the infection rate absolutely it doesn't get rid of it completely you put 20 30 people i mean uh, Dover Cinema, Dover uh, Silver Screen is, a, is quite a small cinema, but you could get maybe 10, 15 people in there with social distancing. Not a lot of money, but still money. Uh, I don't know about the Cineworld in Dover because I've never been there, um, but certainly the one in Ashford. It's possible, but here's the thing. You're all still going through the same doors. You're all still having these same problems. So it's not safe. You can lower the risk, but you can't get rid of the risk. And if you're going to open up cinemas, something else in the economy has to shut. This is not me saying it from my high horse. This is what the specialists have said. Like when they said, you want to open up the schools, fine. But you should be looking at closing the pubs and the restaurants because... You have to balance this out, which is not something this government is doing. So why am I saying this? Well, first and foremost, Cineworld have been an absolute colossal dick. Point blank, an absolute dick. Because not only have they closed all their cinemas, they didn't bother telling their staff. The first thing the staff knew about it, the people who actually go to these places to work, who have been risking their lives to do their job, to, to bring home a paycheck, they found out when the media reported it. Now, if I work for a company and that's what they do, that's how they get rid of staff, you bet your ass I am going to find the names of the people who run that company and I'm going to follow their career like you wouldn't fucking believe it. And every single time they come near to a business, I will plaster it all over the shelf. This motherfucker fired me and didn't have the bollocks to tell me. That's just me though. I'm a bit of an arsehole. Another thing that I want to bring up is Boris Johnson's response to this. Boris Johnson urged people to go to the pubs. I mean, he reopened them because his dad fancied a pint. But he urged people to go to the pubs. We saw a spike in cases. He blamed people for going to the pubs. That stupid fucking eat out crap that he kept pushing down people and even came up with, with promotions for okay fine but then he turned around and blamed people going to the restaurants for spreading the virus he's doing the exact same thing with students in schools and now he's urging people to go to the cinema what do you think he's going to do when cases continue to spike this government has no consistency, it has no credibility. And here's the big thing behind it. It's not just Bojo the Wonder Clown. It's Matt Hancock. It's, of course, it's Dominic Cummings, but it's pretty Patel. It's Gavin Williamson. It's Rishi Shunak. Rishi Shunak. I have a lot of teeth in my head. Give me a pass on that one. Um... It's, it's the whole cabinet. But when you really come down to the crux of the matter, it's not in the conservative nature to shut businesses, 
Now they'll take taxpayer money and they'll give it to people who don't need it. They'll give it to millionaires and billionaires. They'll give it to the richest companies. Um, but they, they, they won't protect a small business. And in the last 10 years, we have not seen them protect the NHS at all. So clearly they don't care about human lives. Problem after problem after problem. So now it's a, it's a counting game. How long till Boris Johnson blames people from going to the cinema after he's encouraged people to go to the cinema?